<clears throat> hey folks, DC here from DC's Gadgets. Today is the 3rd of May, 2020. And I'm out in my yard, this is my backyard, where I do my queens. Several tasks to do today, and I'll, I'll do stuff while I talk about it. I'm going to change the hive stand, because this hive stand here is getting kind of funky, and ruins some stuff for us. So, first thing I do is go into this last box. This has been a cell builder now for four weeks. This is the, this will be the fourth set of grass coming out of it. The first one was pretty good. I think I got eight. I got like six. Last week they did like three or four. So it's falling off. I haven't been in here since last Sunday when I did my grass. I'm hoping for about four. Um, I mean, I'd love to get eight or ten, but I, I, could, I could actually work eight or ten. I got more than ten. I have a problem getting nukes going because um, you know, I work a full-time job. And I'd love to get to a point where I'm you know, making 15, 20 queens a week, but uh, it's just not practical for me. I just, it's a lot of work moving stuff around, trying to work full time, do the same thing. Um, I found practical for me is like six to eight queens a week I could actually move around. So anyway, we're going to pop this open. Um, whatever they've got in here, that bar is going to go straight into the incubator. The box on the far right, which is the yellow box on top of the not yellow box, um, that's going to become my uh, my cell builder. What we're going to do here, once I pull this frame out, put an incubator, we're going to go through that one. I'm going to pull a brood frame out of the bottom, stick it in here, let them make themselves a queen. I'll take an empty frame from the top, and put it on the bottom. And we're going to move stuff around. So we'll, as I as we do it, we'll talk about it. So we're going to look in here. And I'm hoping to get you know, four to six queens out of here. See what they did for me. I did shake some uh, nurse bees in last week to try to help it along. But that was the problem with sitting these cell builders. It's only good for a few weeks. I got one. I got one. I, think I wasn't expecting a whole lot. I got one. I'll go stick her in the incubator and come back. And I will go through the whole thing. I may have put a... Let's do it now. I think bees move larva. So let's see if they move something to a different frame. Not nothing in that frame. That's on this frame. So a little bit about how I do queens. The first year I did queens, three years back, I set up sub builders. I did the whole um, closed builder separate um, finisher, starter finisher type thing. So I would go out, had a deep box with a, a screen bottom and some screens around it, ventilation, a little water cup in the bottom of it, and I'd shake in like six or seven frames of bees. I'd leave them queenless for like three or four hours, and I'd give them a frame of graphs, and leave it overnight, and then I'd come back and I'd put my grass in the box above a uh, queen excluder and let them finish out. Did that quite a bit. I had success. The biggest drawback I found to that whole thing is I'm in the box a lot, and didn't like being in the box a lot. So uh, changed things last year. I need to get a bottom board for that thing. So I changed things last year. So instead of a separate starter finisher box. I just I put together a cell builder and run it for like three weeks. I was just shaking lots and lots of bees, my grass in there, and then when the the bees stopped making queens, I just give that box a queen cell or I'm gonna make a queen, and move on making the builder up. So, but still, it still works. I'm trying something different. This is very similar to what Michael Palmer and, and um, Richard Noel do. On a really small scale, because those guys make them big. You want to watch somebody make a big cell builder, watch Michael Palmer or watch Richard. So, what I did in this box last Sunday, I set this up. I, uh, I had a different box here. Shook all my bees into here. Put brood frames in both halves. Made sure the queen was in the bottom. Queen excluder, put that on top. So all the brood that was in the top now is totally hatched out. There's a lot of bees here in the bottom. So I'm looking for the queen. Don't want to take the queen. This is all cap brood. I really don't want that frame. Over in my original cell builder, I want to put a brood frame with some open larva so they can make themselves a queen. And if I spot the queen here, I'm going to shake some bees into that other box too. I'm pretty sure I've marked her. Most of my queens are marked. Um, 
I talk about this a lot. I've done it in videos. I think you should have a marked queen simply because if you go in your box someday and you find a queen that's not marked, you know immediately that something in your box has changed. I mean, it is possible your bees rubbed her mark off, but it's also possible that they superseded. And so it gives yourself a heads up that, okay, if um, I've got a new different queen in my box, my bee's personality can change in a month. And so just something to be ready for. I got some eggs right there. I really would like some day four larvae. Haven't seen her yet. This whole frame is all eggs on this side. I might give him this frame. It's all eggs on this side. I got larvae right there. Okay. So I've got larvae that just hatched out. Right in the middle. Let's check out the sun. Let me shake these bees off. I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up or not, but we'll look at it anyway. So, right in the middle of that frame, there's a bunch of eggs in there. And there's some larvae that's just recently hatched out. So, even if they don't do larvae, there's eggs. They can make a queen off this. So, I'll put this frame in what used to be the cell builder. And I'll check them on uh, Wednesday or Thursday, see if they're making a queen. Stick that right in the middle. I know where it's at. This way. Actually, I want the other lid because I'm going to put my feeder jar on top of my cell builder. So put the lid without a hole on it right here. I always feed my cell builders just in case. All right, so I took the frame out of here. I would like to see the queen. These bees are not as active as I'd hope. It's noon. I was really hoping to have a lot of bees flying around right now. Foragers out to come back. So it, um, when I move these boxes around, all the foragers would come back and make the cell builder stronger. But it's not, not flying that much. There are a lot of bees in the box, though. There she is. Okay, I found her. Real dark queen. And she doesn't have a white dot in her back, so let's see if we can get her on this camera here. Walking around there. White dot in her back. I can't tell. So much glare on my screen. Hopefully, hopefully you got her in there. Alright, so I see her on that frame. And I stick her back right against the wall. I'm going to shake some bees in the other box. So, she's against that wall. This box is going to move across the yard. I'm take this frame and take this drone comb frame out. And she can lay eggs in that. Keep the oops, let's do this. Put the bottom board down. I need three hands. Put this down here. My bottom board is just a piece of plywood. Fits right inside here, and I've got the little gate on the front I can open up, shake those bees down in there. Put this right here. And shake these in. And shake this one in. Let's move this over. This lid will go on that box. This lid will go on this box. Oops, let's put the graph bar in there. So I don't usually do this with the graph bar since I've got the time. And I'm not going to graph until probably 5 o'clock. I'll put it in there. Let the bees play with it for a few hours. I'll open the front gate up so they can get in and out. So I've got plenty of nurse bees in there. My queen is in this box, so I don't lose my supplies. I'm just going to stick this right on top. Knock those bees off. 
I'm gonna move this across the yard about 30 feet, stick it on a different high speed. So all the foragers that were out are gonna go back in this box. Lemon's gonna make their own queen now. He's gonna move stuff around and change this frame out. Oops. <laughs> fun, fun. Let me just slide them over. I did squish a couple bees. It happens. Now this box has an attached bottom. I'll just move the whole thing over here for right now. Same with me there. This stand is at problems. All right, so this one queen slow is going to go in the incubator. Hopefully I'll get it clean by Friday. I'll come in here Wednesday, see what they're doing. When I come back, get my grass, I'll fill the sugar water, and we'll see how things go. <clears throat> so with the miracle of video editing, it's already Tuesday, May the 5th, Cinco de Mayo. Just realized that like five minutes ago. All right, so quick recap what we did. I walked into a piece of metal earlier, cut that, see if I get stung. What we did Sunday, this position had two boxes, a yellow one and a not yellow one. And I had made it queenless, took the queen and moved it across the yard, made this box queenless, about 12.30, came back at 4.30, putting grass. I made a comparison to what I'm doing here to what Michael Palmer does and what um, Richard Noel does. And the biggest thing is difference in size. Richard just did a video about 10 days ago, and I'll put a link in the description to go watch his. It's a pretty good video. Um, the biggest difference is where I'm using two five frame medium nuke boxes, he had uh, a deep, two deeps and two mediums. I think they're 10 frames, could have been eight. I'm not sure, they could have been nationals. He's over in France and the European boxes are different sizes, but he's had, he had two deeps and two mediums and the same basic thing. He put, separated an excluder and put brood in the top. I think his brood was in 10 days where mine was in a week, but watch the video anyway. But the biggest difference is he's looking at volume. And as I said before, I'm not looking for volume. I'm looking for eight cells. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I put 10 grafts in. If I get 10, that's awesome. I, I don't expect to. Um, if I get 10, I can handle 10. If I get more than 10, it becomes an issue. If I get 10 once in a while, it's one thing, but every week it becomes an issue. So I'm looking for six to eight. And the idea behind this, because I got these two side by side, is I did this this week. So when Sunday comes around, I'll move the queen right section back over here. This graph bar goes in incubator. That queen right section goes across the yard. I'll take a frame out of the top, put it over here, gives me an empty spot in that box. That becomes a cell builder. So every week I'm working a different colony. I shouldn't have to worry about adding nurse bees. Um, I'll move brood frames. Like when I bring the queen right portion back over here, I'll take two brood frames from the queen weight portion, stick them in here above the queen excluder, and they'll sit there for a week and they'll come out. So that should alleviate the issue where I'm building a cell builder every three weeks because it's the same alternate between the two beehives. We're gonna try it. I'll try it for a few weeks and see how it works. I think the theory is pretty sound. We're gonna pop this open and see what they're doing. They went through the whole quart of sugar water since Sunday afternoon. I got the brush so I can brush off the bar. I don't want to shake it. I didn't bring any smoke. They're not really in good mood right now. Let's see what we got here. No. 
Looks like four or five maybe. I got one, two, three, four, five. So I'll see if I can get some of these on the camera. Like I said, I would have liked to have six or eight. I'll take five. And it could be resources, could be my grafts were bad, could be a number of things. So we'll live with it, you know. Actually, it looks like six. I got four. I got six. Okay, I did get six. I got one in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Excellent. So we'll stick it back in there. And on Sunday, we'll move stuff around. We'll graft in the other box. And I'll come back in about an hour and put a new jar on here. Give them more sugar water. So well, now I'm in the truck because as I'm cleaning all my stuff up, I realized there was some stuff I wanted to say and didn't say. So I've got to go look at somebody's house with bees in it. While well, I'm going that way, I'll talk on the... Uh, add this. So I went in there today. I really I wanted to go in yesterday, but just couldn't do it. So like I said, I said before, I'm still working a full-time job, which... Even with the coronavirus thing, it's I guess it's kind of a blessing. I work, I make machine parts for government stuff, you know, and our our military still has to function, so I still work full time. So I'm working, you know, nine and ten hour days, still trying to do bees. Anyway, I couldn't get in yesterday, wanted to, so I got in today, and you really want to do this. You saw the example last week. Now I knew that my old cell builder was starting to fail because the numbers had dropped down each successive week and it had been, it was on its fourth week. So I really pushed it to the limit. But if I had gone in, you know, a week ago Tuesday, I would have seen how badly they were failing and I could have broken it down and done something. So it is, it is a good idea to go in one or two days after grass because then you're just losing two days, you know, instead of losing a whole week. So essentially I lost, you know, five or six potential virgin queens in a whole week, which Another story, I actually lost a bunch this week. I had seven mating nukes out. Went out and checked them all this weekend. Um, two successful, three head laying workers. Um, two of them, I'm not sure. I couldn't find any evidence of a queen in there, but I hadn't given up on him yet. But, uh, it was a bad week. And shake, I, anytime I shake bees out, it's a bad week. So that's really what I wanted to add. It is important when you're doing this to get in there just to be sure you're actually getting some kind of product also make sure your queen's not in there because if there had been a queen in that box even a virgin queen in that box they would just clean the cups out and although the method i'm using now i i don't expect this is going to happen i mean anything can happen bees bees do what bees want to do and they don't ask us permission they just do it but i can't tell you how many times last year and the year before last where i'd, I'd put a cell builder together and put my grass in and come back two days later and every single cup is pulled out because Somewhere along the line, you know, a cell fell off or I missed something or a virgin queen flying around got in that box and you got a virgin queen running around or even a matey queen running around and you lost everything. So yeah, for those, for those reasons, go in and check the graphs. See, so make sure you got something going on. So I'll post this thing up and then um, next week or week after I'll do some more videos and we'll show how things are going in progress. I still have to finish the progress on the... Um, on the non-graft grafts, I did that stuff with the cut comb on top of a frame, and um, I deleted my video by mistake. I just, you know, dumbass attack. I had recorded, I remember how many, I think it was four. I ended up getting four queens out of that cut comb graft thing, but I deleted the video. So we'll do it again, do some more video. So stay tuned.